Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be going to magic school and trying to put together some runes in Runica and the six sided spell books. In this game, players are going to be drafting dice, they're going to be rolling those dice, and then trying to put them on their own spell grid trying to complete runes, which are basically different arrangements of colored dice. These dice have different faces, they have different abilities. There's quite a bit going on in the game, though I would say it's a fairly easy game to understand. It might be a little bit harder to do well in. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in here. I'll give you an overview of how, how it all works together, of course. And then we'll see you on the other side with some final thoughts. Here we go. In the game, each player is going to pick one of these player boards. They're going to take the four tokens that match the character they're playing. They're also going to take one of these rings here and place it around that section. In this configuration, we'll lay out the four uh, teachers at the school, and then the four master runes and four other runes from the deck, which are these here. Uh, everybody has one player aid as well, showing you the faces on the dice on one side and a breakdown of the turn order on the other one. And then we've also got here these merits and a bag with dice, and then you're ready to go. So each round is going to go like this. The, the players are going to draw and then draft dice. So you're going to pull out of the bag four dice per player. So if I'm playing with three players, I'm going to pull out 12 of these dice. Just put them on the table. You don't need to worry about what faces are showing on them now. And then everyone around the table, starting from the start player, whoever has this very nice token here, is going to take one at a time until you've got four. So I'm going to grab just four. Let's assume there were 12 out there and we took the time to draft them. So everybody's done that. And then I've got my four dice right here. Then I'm going to, in turn order, all the players are going to take a player turn. I'm going to take the dice and I'm going to roll them. And I'm going to potentially re-roll them if I want to by discarding one die and re-rolling as many of the other ones as I want to. And I could even do that again, remove another one, re-roll the leftovers, and so on. So in this case, I might remove one of these and re-roll these two into that, and then I'll settle for that. Once that's done, I'm going to utilize these dice to try to uh, either get help from the teachers, influence the teachers, uh, try to complete some runes, or possibly manipulate what's going on out here, place them on the uh, grid, my spell grid, and try to complete spells, of course. So, the faces on the dice are going to show a few different things. They'll show the, the element of the die, sort of the general face on the die. They might show uh, a face that has a symbol that lets you know you can rotate this clockwise here one time, one click or they might have a symbol for a victory point. So, the victory point ones, uh, they will go onto the grid and they will be placed like the, all the dice are placed. You have to push it in from the matching side onto the grid. So it can come in from any four of these locations and it would be pushed into the grid like so. If anything was in its way, it gets pushed. And if anything drops off, it just cycles back to the bag. Uh, the ones that have a symbol, you can push them onto the grid, so you can just push it onto that, or you can use it to influence one of the teachers, the matching one. Assuming no one has done it this turn yet, you can put a die on there, you can utilize a special ability on it, and then you will mark that you have influenced that teacher. And once you have influenced all four, meaning your token is on every single one of them, you are going to remove those tokens and then draw one of these merit cards that's going to have victory points right on it. Two, three, or four victory points. The objective of the game is to get to 20 of those victory points. So that's one way to make some victory points, is influence the teachers, get their help. I'll tell you in one second what they all do. Uh, like I said, the other option is just pushing it on here. And then lastly, this phase here is a rotation phase. You just have to rotate. This one does not get pushed onto the grid ever. Uh, once you've done all of this sort of thing, then you could check and see if maybe you've completed one of these runes, or maybe even one of the really hard to do fancy runes. 
If you've done so, you're going to claim that rune. So let's say I managed to get four in a line of the same color. I'm going to claim this empower rune. And I'm going to have number of victory points, in this case nothing actually, and then some special ability. This one says that I may flip this card on my, on my turn, so it's a one-time effect, to draw and roll two dice. Some of them uh, stick around. Some of them are, uh, you know, once per round type effects. This one, for example, says, says I may rotate my uh, disc clockwise as if I'm resolving a rotation face on a die. Some of them are continuous powers, things like that. Uh, the larger ones here across the bottom have, of course, more victory points, such as six victory points for that one, five. So that's it. And once that's all done and all the players have done that, we've scored the runes, we've scored merit cards, then we clean up. We are going to uh, make sure everything is replenished. We are going to pass the start player marker, again, this little guy right here, and start from a new draft. A couple of minor things. When you use some dice to complete a pattern, uh, some are colored, as you can see, that means they have to be of that color. Others could be anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of dice here and uh, give you an example. If I do something like that, if that's what my, uh, what my board looks like, I'll just throw in a couple of extra things just for the sake of it. If that's what my board looks like, I can complete that. And you can rotate these, but you cannot mirror them. So if I've completed that one there, I would remove the dice, I would claim this, and I also get bonus victory points for every die that's showing that one victory point symbol. You would just take a cardboard, one victory point token for that. And then these come off, cycle back in, like I said. So there you go, that's how that works. Uh, these characters over here have different powers right on them. So if you influence this character, you're going to draw and roll two dice, and then you have to place those. If you influence this guy here, you have to ro uh, rotate your disc to any position. So uh, you can ignore a single click clockwise if you do that. Influence this one, you get to push one die into an adjacent space on your grid. So you can just do that. You could even have something in the center and push it any direction you want to. Very nice for manipulation. And then this last character here, you influence her, then you are going to discard one die from your grid, and if that die had a victory point symbol on it, you will in fact gain that victory point. And you just remove that die completely. So that's what you're doing with them with a little assistance trying to complete these runes. That's largely the game, except for a couple of other little things which I'm not gonna go into. Uh, one final thing I wanna mention is you can play Solitaire. If you want to play Solitaire, you'll choose one of these four characters you wish to challenge. You're gonna flip that one over. You'll still have the other three. Uh, you are going to be playing against what they expect you to finish, which are just simply versions of, of these runes and so forth. And uh, you have to complete these before the dice deplete from the bag, and there are mechanisms in place that will start removing those dice from the bag. Every victory point you get in solitaire mode allows you to take a removed die and put them back in the bag. So it's all about managing what's in there and making sure you do not run out of uh, the dice. So there you go. That should be enough to give you an idea of what's going on. Let's go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts. And that is Runica. So, uh, this is an interesting game. I was uh, very much charmed by the look of it. The back of the box certainly looks fantastic because the components in the game are very nice. But the game itself doesn't really play or feel like this cover might perhaps lead you to believe. This is a different... This cover is, I think, for a different game than the one that comes in this box. A little bit, at least a little bit. So let's break this down, shall we? I'm going to start with the, uh, the strong aspects of the game, and I'll talk about the things I thought weren't quite um, to my liking at the end of that. So let's start with the strongest thing of all, the aesthetics. They really are fantastic. The game looks very beautiful. The production is stellar. And uh, there is just no part of this game that isn't well illustrated, well thought out, well produced. There's even in the box here, they even went through the trouble of producing an extra book 
or booklet that is a guide to your first game and it is in the form of a comic book and it's going to guide you through how to play the game. This is really lovingly illustrated, very well put together. So, great, kudos, big time there. Uh, I like the, uh, the replayability, I like. I think the game has a lot of different options in it. There is one extra professor you can choose to use that I didn't show you uh, on top of the other four. And there's even a, a solo mode, like I said. Uh, it gets a minor ding here because I don't think the game ultimately scales that well, but I'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? Uh, and then lastly, tactics and strategy and luck. There is some luck, certainly, but you are drafting the dice. And uh, there are a bunch of interesting puzzles within puzzles in this game. There, It's an extremely puzzly game. So if you like that, if you like just that very nature of manipulating these dice and where they might come in and where they have to be positioned to, if you enjoy all of that, I think you're gonna like that aspect of this game. So those things are all um, thumbs up for me. The things I thought were okay, thematic ties. The game is basically, you know, Harry Potter. This is a Harry Potter ripoff. It's a fairly inoffensive ripoff but I do have an issue with the mismatched look to game. This is not really a game I would recommend uh, if you're looking for a light, silly, in any way, um, waving your wands around in a Harry Potter school kind of experience. It's a brain-burning, long, slow play. It is not... Uh, there will be no cavorting about as you are waving and, and casting things. You are sitting down at your desk sweating. That's what the play experience is. It's not really what the artwork is telling you, though. Uh, and then ease of play. I think the game has a, ru a good, good rule book. I think the rule book is fine. But it can have a punishing first experience, for sure. Because, again, of the type of game it is. So I think the ease of play is okay. I also had one unanswered question that I couldn't really figure out, but I just kept on trucking. I didn't worry about it too much. My main hit, and this is a pretty big hit to be honest, is game length. I think this game is entirely too long for what it is and what it offers. Uh, the box says 60 to 90 minutes. I, this is not... This shouldn't be a 90-minute game. This is... There's not enough here going on to warrant an hour and a half game. Puzzles are nice. I like the puzzling nature of the game. But the slog to scrounge a couple of points here and there every few turns to finally make it to 20 after an hour and a half, but you're doing really the same thing over and over. I just, it's too long. It's just too long for what it is. So... I have an issue with that. They do say in the rule book you can play to fewer points, but and I definitely would, by the way, but um, yeah, 20 points uh, just doesn't work out for me, and, I, and that hurts the scalability for me because you're going to have tons of downtime in the game. There's certainly quite a bit to think about on your turn. If you're doing, the, if you're doing that with two people, it's certainly much more manageable than having to sit there for three other players figuring out what they want to do and you're fighting for the same spells that they the amount of them on the table does change based on the number of players the runes that is but it it would it's very punishing to sit there have a plan be almost at that plan have somebody take something away from the plan you are now not just probably infuriated but stuck with a bunch of dice on your board that are just getting in your way. So the game has a big potential for that, for frustration, for infuriation, for plans not quite working out. And these are kind of long. They take a bit to build. So that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. Overall, there's a mismatch in tone here a little bit. Once you know that, you're good. But I wouldn't buy this game for the kids because they like Harry Potter, you know? It's just not that style of game. And I would make sure that you are someone who can handle a lot of puzzles, brain burning kind of play, and frustration. Because you're going to encounter some of that in this game. So there you go. That is Runica. 
and the six-sided spell books. Here's my bottom line for this one. A charming look and theme hide a game that is brain-burning, long, and sometimes frustrating. Which is pretty much what I just said. It's gonna get a 6 out of 10 from me. That's not a bad score, by the way. And I did enjoy the game. I think there is definitely an audience for this game. And uh, I hope that they find it, because I think it's so amazingly produced that I would hate for folks who are gonna really, truly love this experience to miss out on it. So there you go. If that overview just seemed rocking to you, and some of these little you know warnings I'm giving you aren't really bothering you, get it, because I think you're gonna enjoy it. It's, it's an amazing looking game. Uh, I just um, wish it was a little less frustrating, I guess. And a little shorter would be nice. There you go. That's Runica, everybody. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you on the next one.